Day three and this script copying business is now my favorite thing in life and I have a pretty good life. I'm Corel Seegers. I sold my first produced script at age 17 and this month I'm honing my style with help from the writer of Yellowstone and a trick learned from Stephen King, Joan Didion and Shakespeare. I'm copying the screenplay of Sicario word for word and you can follow here as I learn. If you missed the first couple of days, check out the playlists as each day we build on the previous. While the past two days each started with a scene that didn't make it into the film, today's opening scene survived and it is an important one. It's part of the Silvio Elisio subplot, which will intersect with the main plot at the end of Act 2 and the start of Act 3. We'll copy about 10 pages in total for today, so let's get started. And what stares us in the face immediately on day three is our mistakes of day two. But look, this moustache also seems to be misspelled. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to leave it because I don't mind it. Maybe it's a American versus English uh, thing. We'll look it up, but now we're going to get started. How do you know whether you can afford doing this? Well, it's about your confidence in writing. Um, if you're not sure what you're doing, don't do it. But as you write more and more, you'll feel when you can afford to cheat and describe things that are not technically technically on this on this screen. Don't even recall whether this scene is in the movie. I don't think it is. But now assume that that opening scene had stayed in the film this is the continuation of that scene a lot has happened in the meantime so in terms of continuity that would have possibly been an issue um yeah anyway let's keep going chronology would be an issue i guess So there are now three reasons why this opening scene was cut. First, um, it's not Sicario's film, it's really Kate's film. Secondly, it would have made um, Alejandro look quite negative for right from the start. We want to have his story as justification for his actions later. Um, and the third is that chronology thing where a lot of time has passed between that opening scene and this um, and that doesn't seem to be consistent with the fact that we actually seem to be picking up right from there. I wish there was an autocorrect for obvious things like this. Everybody wants the truth. The truth is a good thing. So does that make us empathize with Alejandro? Possibly. Um, all right, I'm gonna put this full stop there because essentially it's ending the sentence. They come around a bend and we see a Colombian military base, full stop. So a long paragraph, but it's kept together because it's really Again, what is intrusion? We don't necessarily see all this. Which suggests that Alejandro is not a narco. Then who is he? There's a veil of mystery around this character and it works quite well. More so because we have a point of view in this film, and that is Kate's. So here we are clearly in Kate's point of view, yet Sheridan keeps using we see. We're watching a movie, remember? 
And it's something that I've always liked about screenplays from the very beginning when I was reading them as an um, inexperienced writer. The we see is truly suggestive of that cinematic experience to me, to my taste. So I don't understand people who have issues with it. Important line of dialogue. We do what we need to do. So this brings us to the central idea of this film. What does that mean? What do you need to do? How far are you willing to go? I think I know why the scenes with Alejandro were cut, because it brings us closer in Kate's point of view. If we had known about Alejandro before Kate meets him, we would have been out of her point of view. Now we're meeting with Alejandro through the point of view of Kate. That's a significant difference. And I'm only now learning not to type or uh, hit the shift key uh, when we go to a new element because Final Draft automatically capitalizes the first word of a new element. What do I mean by that? For instance, now um, Macy, the first letter will automatically be capitalized. So I didn't have to do uh, shift and it did that automatically. Saves us microseconds. We love the golf streams. When we see those, we know people mean business. I wonder if um, Sheridan had flown in a private jet at that time. I don't think so. But I believe there's an anecdote that uh, he did fly in a private jet when he had a meeting in LA and he refused to go there because he didn't want to sleep in LA and that's when the studio offered to fly him over in a private jet so he, he didn't have to sleep in LA. Um, maybe it's true, maybe not. Good story. Oh, look, we have a flashback. At the end, I'll give you a list of all my points. But as we continue, see which choices you agree with and which you don't. That's how you develop your style. Now, back to work. There we go again. We see. I would say she lies face down, but yeah, a lot of people use lay in this context whether it's correct or not. I remember him waking up from a nightmare on the plane. I don't remember seeing the flashback. So we'll check that. So what we've seen here is quite interesting. If we had established Kate as the main character, now we're going against that by showing a flashback from Alejandro's point of view. Um, we'll check the film whether the, the flashback survived. Um, often I believe it's better to limit flashbacks and dreams and uh, any such hyper subjective experiences to the main character or at least the point of view character. That's great comic relief, Yoda. Um, which is at the same time also a suggestion that Alejandro will be her mentor. And if there ever was a doubt about who's the main character um, here, we lay out the archetypes. Kate is the hero, Alejandro is the mentor. Come on. 
I love Sheridan's use of commas. It's effective and appropriate. And we're going to leave it there, but not uh, before fixing. You saw that right after the Silvio Elicio scene, we went back to the beach where the script opened. Now, this follow-up scene was also cut from the screenplay later, or never filmed. Um, and what follows next is a scene in the Colombian jungle where Alejandro is being picked up by Matt and his crew. Again, that too cut from the finished film. And a little later, again, we have a whole page deleted from the Gulfstream sequence. Why so many deleted scenes? Well, you may have guessed it. The first deleted scene today was, like the script's opener, from Alejandro's point of view. The Colombian scene had Matt, but not Kate. And the deleted scene on the plane was Alejandro's nightmare. All we see in the film is Alejandro's jolting awake through Kate's eyes. By now it's clear that Sicario is Kate's story, and at some point the wise decision was made to cut every scene that was not from Kate's POV from Act 1 and Act 2, except for those short moments part of Elysio's subplot. As you will see, that's uh, very different for Act 3, because there we have a very different POV situation. Now the reason? Shifting POV doesn't work quite as well for feature films as it does for television. Check out my videos on the topic on this channel. I will go as far as claiming that if you don't master POV, there is no career for you in feature film writing. The same is largely true for spelling. To be a competent screenwriter, you need to be a competent writer first. We haven't found many grammatical mistakes, spelling errors or typos for that matter, other than Fiji with a G. So when I saw Sheridan spell the word moustache without an O, for a moment I believed that he was using the Spanish word. But that is bigote. So no excuses here. M-O-U-S-T. A-C-H-N-E. I don't know about you, but I learned to avoid using the shift key for capitals at the start of a new element. Final Draft takes care of that. It's not going to improve your story, but it speeds up the writing. When they're on the plane, Kate inquires about food, and I mentioned how the jet flight is perfunctory, but the real subtext here may be that Kate is being exhausted with lack of sleep and lack of food. Perhaps this prepares us for when she drops the ball later in the midpoint reversal sequence. When you look at this film superficially, you may think it's a dual protagonist film, and you would certainly be forgiven for thinking so if you just read the script. But Alejandro is not the hero, he's a mentor. He has gone through his own hero's journey and he's now passing on his wisdom while he steps in to do the work our hero cannot. This is confirmed by Kate's sarcastic line to Alejandro. Okay, Yoda. I'm a sucker for meaningful travel in movies and when it is done well, you get films like Sicario. We just copied the scene in the Gulf Stream, which brings the team from Luke Air Force Base in Phoenix to Fort Bliss near El Paso on the border in Texas. It puts distance between her home and the territory where the story is going to take place. But the main sequence of travel is yet to come. The threshold that brings us from Act 2, sorry, from Act 1 into Act 2. And that's my favorite sequence in the movie, and we'll study it tomorrow. You can download an overview of these seven points if you follow the link below. And if this video has convinced you of the merits of copying a great script, join me for the next few days. Better even, why don't you use the same method to prepare for your own next screenplay draft? Immersion Script is a three-week bootcamp where you learn from the best screenwriters in the top seven genres. You can finish the whole course in a few weeks. And if you're interested, now is the time. With the discount code SHERIDAN50, you only pay half. The link is below. Did you like this video? Then please subscribe and hit the bell to stay tuned for more Sicario secrets. Happy watching, happy writing. Cheers.